Hi everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. How are you doing tonight, Coco? I'm doing great, Donna. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Because we get to talk about Drag Race. We get to talk about Drag Race. Yay. Yeah. I'm super excited about that, actually. I hope all of our listeners are um, excited for this new season. We also have a uh, season of UK that's going to be airing at the same time of the, as this um, here in a, a couple of weeks. Yeah, that, I find mm-hmm. that to be actually incredibly kind of weird, actually, it is. that it's happening at the same exact time. Yeah, I feel like for the past, like three years maybe even five years people have been like hey this is too much drag race we want less and then they're like we'll give you more yeah they're like they're like oh well you did say throughout the year that rupaul didn't want to be able to have the ability to make money yeah and said no one ever <laughs> like rupaul definitely wants rupaul's money like that yeah let's just talk about that for five seconds for real. <laughs> and now with like a franchise in every country you know, we can expect to see even more drag race. Well, I think they just confirmed Australia this last year, too, mm. which makes perfect sense. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. There's, oh, yeah. There's no, lots a lot of, of queens in Australia. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's 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 definitely grown from... It's grown into, like, a huge empire. And, it is, in a good way, though, because it's giving more drag artists the opportunity to have some, some sort of notoriety. Because mm-hmm. when you think about it, listeners, for those of you out here who don't know a lot about drag, drag queens don't really get paid all that much money unless no. you've made it in some capacity. So if you've been doing drag for three years and you haven't made it to a bigger stage or on TV, mm-hmm. like you probably don't make very much money to do this thing you love. And so to get have more opportunities to like reach the platform, mm-hmm. like what we call the Olympics of drag, like it's a huge deal. And I do want to preface this episode and our future RuPaul's Drag Race episodes with a little bit of something. Yes, we are aware of RuPaul's past problematic behaviors. The fracking, um, the lack of acceptance for trans contestants um, and drag kings on the show. Um, All of the things that we do not like about the show and we do not particularly like about RuPaul. But we understand that there is also some good and some benefits that come out of this show. And I'd say they do in a lot of the ways, outweigh some of the negative things. But um, I don't want to dismiss the way that anyone feels about, um, you know, RuPaul's problematic past. Coco, you're hosting a viewing party um, about uh, for Drag Race, and you kind of got a little bit of backlash on it online about RuPaul and, and what that's about. What do you have to say, kind of? Yeah, so I... So- Pretty much what happened was I shared the poster. I'm not even on the poster. Yeah. You. Just my production company is. And what happened was there was somebody in the comments who were like, why are we still supporting RuPaul? They are transphobic AF. Like, I yeah. can't understand why this community can't be better and blah, 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 blah. The thing is, Drag Race isn't just about RuPaul. And yes, yeah. RuPaul benefits from Drag Race. There is no doubt about it. And RuPaul has done some incredibly problematic things that shouldn't be excused. But we as a community can do both and. Both holding RuPaul accountable for the things that they have done that are problematic and hurtful and harmful to the environment and the communities to which she should be serving. But we can also, at the same time, acknowledge and be proud of all the amazing designers who get to see their work being showcased on the show. To be able to see all the wig designers who get to see their stuff, the jewelry designers, the camera crew, the producers, the... Like the tours of people who expect to have their venues full yeah. of RuPaul's Drag Race people and customers, and they are booking these. So it's not just about RuPaul. And yes, who benefits the most from Drag Race? Absolutely RuPaul. But you would be denying so many people in our community and world at this point from this art form. Yeah. And I know you can say, like, well, we need to like be better and create faster and quicker art forms that reach that level. The thing is, Dragula is trying. Camp Wana Kiki is trying. Exactly. But y'all have to support those platforms if you want them to be like Drag Race. Like You, you do. Have to. It's up to you as the listener to do the both and. Hold RuPaul accountable, boost the other shows, and also support the amazing contestants. And it is... Uh, um, it of note, like having a trans man on Drag Race is monumental. Somebody on that world stage, that's monumental. It really is. It really is. And that's what we're seeing out of this season. And granted, you know, uh, a lot of people um, may feel like it's a crumb as far as like the progress that can be made for mm-hmm. the show. But you know what? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're we're going to keep saying it. You know what? There's a lot of work still to be done. Yeah, and I I'm, think that's I, the theme for 2021. There's a lot of work to be exactly. done. Exactly. And I celebrate. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. This is where I differ from my community a little bit. I like to celebrate smaller successes, especially yeah. in my 30s. I 
we can always say like because you know this is what also kills me like so say we have like like for the blm stuff like portland was like really trying hard to get community policing in place and like you know meetings were being had and like even if those things passed or didn't pass i know people are always like well we have so much more work to do and that's true but it is. please pause smell the roses for five seconds and acknowledge like how far we've come like yeah. that's that's also important it's once again it's a both and yeah pause smell the roses ex ex be excited and then of course push it for it to be changed forever yep i could not have said it better and now that we're past that little caveat to um, us doing this Drag Race series. Um, we're going to get right into episode one and the big opening of season 13. Yeah, and me and Donna weren't watching it in the same place, so we have we different weren't. reactions. We actually specifically told each other that we wouldn't talk about the episode and save it specifically for you listeners to where mm -hmm. we could debrief with each other. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, yeah. We're not going to talk about necessarily the looks because mm -hmm. it's a podcast. And yeah. I'm not going to be like, okay, yeah, girl, I love this red jumpsuit. Like, y'all don't care. <laughs> it's not going to be like what we did when the promo looks came out, right? Because yeah. I feel like we talked a lot about the visuals when the promo looks came out. And this is a podcast. We don't want to have to have you guys grab a visual aid in order to join along. We want you to be able to listen and enjoy. So anything that we say about the outfits, it's going to be very quick because we want to focus on the true uh, the true meat of the episode. If Absolutely. You will. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the first two people who entered into the workroom were... Uh, Candy Muse, yes, right? and Joey J, and Joey J. Uh huh. And I have to say, so um, we're gonna do impressions. We're yeah. not gonna talk about their outfits. We're gonna talk about impressions. And yeah, the thing is, Candy Muse came off completely wrong, in my opinion, for TV. <laughs> yeah, like I know that they're trying to build these characters, and I get that, but like the sassiness aspect of it for good TV doesn't fit with my viewpoint. I thought she came off great. I think the only thing that kind of hindered her was the... I think the producers are really trying to push some shade towards Aja and, mm -hmm. like, their falling out, mm -hmm. which, I, I mean, they love making connections on that show, but I um, I didn't really like that. I also didn't know that they had a falling out. I knew that it wasn't called the House of Aja anymore. I just didn't, I, I didn't know that they had a falling out like it was kind of explained so i guess that's good but it also has nothing to do with this season yeah well yeah it did, it did come up in the first episode didn't it yeah like, oh yeah it's no longer called the house of oz or something it's like that. yeah 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 i can't remember it's it's not uh the dollhouse is what they call it oh yeah. right right not to be confused with portland's own toy box yeah can we talk about um joey's uh entrance line though the filler queen thing why would you want to label yourself that from the start okay see and this is where i would love to argue because like i thought that was so iconic like because queer people nowadays especially millennials and gen Zers, are like they're always like you know oh i want to die every day or like please can i die you know stuff yeah. like that and we know we're all joking self-deprecating humor self-deprecating humor and i just <laughs> when i was like filler i was I was like, that's so stupid. I was like, it's so stupid, but it made me laugh. That's why I liked it. I see that wasn't my reaction. I was like, true. <laughs> I was like, you're you're right, and yes, and um <laughs> sorry, no, that's I mean sorry, no, that's mean. I, I don't want one of these girls to come back and be like, this fucking basic bitch. Um <laughs> No. <laughs> but really I actually um in the promos was really liking Joey J style because I like to mix a lot of uh, masculine elements into my drag too. I like like rocking my the shaved sides of my head oh, sure, and, sure, sure. and rocking mullets and mohawks and stuff like that. And that's so I my drag persona honestly like it it feels most in line with what what Joey J does and even that entrance look that she wore is like I own something like that I, I own an outfit just like that um, yeah, I don't see that the red and black red and black is like a staple and even like the body con aspect of it it's stuff it's like stuff I have yeah okay let's talk about let's the talk about the lip syncs yeah lip let's talk about their lip sync I loved that Candy mimed with her fake boombox that she brought in okay, to the start and end of the song iconic. I'm sorry but that stupid Jean boombox that she brought in there was the dumbest thing I've ever seen <laughs> and I absolutely love it I was like oh yes Come, seriously if because here's the thing like and I want to talk about this in reality of the true like a true drag because drag yeah. race is not true drag it's not it's yeah. super not you probably have never seen these girls like if you know them never wore these outfits ever no no. And we'll probably only wear them on the tour. And let's talk about if this is also your first season of Drag Race that you're watching. This is not how most seasons start. They start with all the girls entering. Yeah. It's not a lip sync showdown the first episode. They also, they change up the formula a lot of the times on the season. And I kind of like what they're doing with this. I do. I, yeah. I do like that because um, drag shows are about lip sync. Yeah. And singing live. And 
Sorry, let me see. The majority of drag shows are about lip syncing to yes. other people's music. Some sing live, some do acrobatics and tricks and all that stuff. But it's drag shows are really about the lip syncing. So it's great to actually have like because there will be some seasons someone will have only lip synced like once or like not at all before they got to the end. And yeah. that's weird. Like how am I as a producer because I book queens from out of town. How am I supposed to book these people and I've never seen them actually perform? Yeah. Like, so this is actually really cool to see how people operate. It does suck that they were ill prepared for it. I would like to see it a does. prepared girl. Like, come in, like, I wish Rue would have been like, come in your dance outfit. Yeah. Come in your dance outfit because it's happening. I think it's funny too. I, like, we watched a recap about this episode and they were like, I think these girls knew that they were going to lip sync. I was like, why would Denali bring ice skates to lip sync on on the main stage and not wear pasties under an outfit that was exposing her chest? Like, if they knew they were going to lip sync, yeah. that would not have happened. Well, yeah, because, you know, Drag Race does not love it when you, um, you know, like, if your costume's falling apart. No. It's not even showing your body. It's your costume falling apart. Yeah. Or not covering what it needs to cover. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, like, so one thing I was going to say about that, the reason I wanted everybody to understand that this isn't, like, normal, like, that's not what you're going to necessarily see at a drag show. Yeah. I will say what Candy Muse did. Like, I could see that at a drag show. I could, too. I, and I thought that was so iconic. And I would have dumped all of my money, all $4 I saved for that evening on her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. I thought Joey did a good job at dancing. However, she was molting all over the stage. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really fit. The, I feel like she was doing a lot for the for the song that it was. It's Call Me Maybe. It's supposed to be cu cutesy and kind of campy and kind of, you know. Like, it was it was a Carly Rae Jepsen song. It's supposed to be a little a little bit more fun and a little less intense. So I, um, I agree with Candy winning that lip sync i do too and i do want to just add because donna mentioned it uh the reason she said molting is because uh joey was wearing uh chicken feathers chicken feathers as like kind of a coat thing and they were just going everywhere all over the place yeah so next up into the workroom was uh denali and la la ree la la ree who came in yes and um so i haven't actually said this so my impression is when denali walked in especially in ice skates i was really just impressed by that. Just floored, yeah. I was floored. It was beautiful. Like the whole outfit was so great, but the it was like the presence was great. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Yeah, I I, I think even listening to her uh, about this episode, she she got some advice from Naomi Smalls to wear something extravagant when she walked in, and she definitely took it. She made a great first impression with her look. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I'm. It made me excited to see what she's gonna bring because she is able to set herself apart by some of her talents that she has. Lala Re, on the other hand, feels very. Um, I feel like uh, like was she the queen in the in the episode that we did that had the breast form that was rolling down? No, that's her mother. To Tamisha. Tamisha did. Um, okay. uh, Lala Re was the one that had the separates that you kind of it had the that you liked. Uh, her outfit, it was like the pink corset with the black piping down oh, it. Oh, I did like yeah. that. It looked mm -hmm. a little weird close up, though. Yeah. Um. So the thing about this was I felt like it was manufactured. Like, I felt like in the sense of, like... And I know, like, there. this is the first episode, so it's really hard to actually gauge that these personalities are like. Because, you know, yeah. it's hard to keep the character the whole season. And I feel like a lot of what I'm seeing is the characters that they manufactured for the show to get good notoriety and good bookings. Because everyone, every queen kind of comes on the show now with a package that they want to show the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, even the package of the personalities. Yeah. So um, I felt like it was manufactured. So moving straight over to the lip sync, uh, the lip sync was iconic. Um, it was ice skates on like seriously that stage probably got destroyed <laughs> yeah the, I, i'd say honestly denali's only drawback was her outfit her outfit and that hair like um i don't think she was prepared to work with the hair in a way that worked with the song in in some cases um but honestly like it was an iconic lip sync simply because of what she was able to pull off um and uh, Lala Ree was hitting every every moment of of that lip sync and the words, so she didn't really have to do a whole lot to outshine Denali in that respect because Denali was struggling with her outfit in a few ways um, during that lip sync. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely saw that, and and, <laughs> and we know that's an instant out for the judges. Like if there's if you're struggling, right, Denali did lose. She did. Yeah, yeah. Denali did lose that lip syncs. So, and I agree, I actually agree with Donna on this one. This one was kind of a little bit more clear cut. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. And So, let's go on to the, the next people who entered, which I believe were... Uh, Tamisha Iman and... Tamisha uh, Iman. And uh, Simone. 
Simone. Yes. Yes. And this is where me and Donna are going to rip each other's hair out because I do not agree well, with Well, we're not there anything. yet. We're not there yet. No, let's, even any of it. <laughs> well, let's talk about their looks. Yeah, let's... Well... It, a little. Yeah, it looks, their looks a little bit. And so I just... So for me, I'm going to go first. Yeah. I super didn't love what Simone brought in the sense of physicality stuff. Like, yeah. Because obviously she wasn't wearing any body. Her legs were really shiny and they were oiled up. So it was Polaroids amazing. with photos of her ass, her legs, her face. Oh, all yeah. Over. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's in the I dress. Was. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Let me explain it. It was just, yeah, it was Polaroids. And then she was kind of wearing, and this actually, and we, we both agreed on this. A lot of the hair that we saw was not like styled. No. Like, if all of it felt I think Tina Burner's was like the only though. really super styled hair that was Yeah. I, now that like I'm even thinking back. Kamora's hair. Kamora's was was nice. Like but just ah. It was very Valley of the Dolls, like Bruce yeah, said. Yeah. It's just like yikes. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, also wearing uh, a hair that was kind of, I mean, it was, it was slightly styled and teased up a little bit, but, but it was just like in the front, in though? the front. Yeah. Like if you weren't good at hair, this would have been the season for you for to you get to get on. on. Dang. Like, I mean, Joey J doesn't wear wigs. So <laughs> sorry. I need to stop like digging it. That's not a dig Joey J. I actually do appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> for when they review back on these episodes. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And it, the true to you though, is, um, I was not in love with the fact and Oh, gosh. And since I live in Portland, let me caveat. The thing is, I think that the photo dress would have looked better with body. That's the thing. Because Simone hmm. was not wearing any body. And you don't have to wear body to be a drag queen. No. Because um, we live in Portland and we have to caveat everything we say. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, no, and it's true. So, the thing is, I, I just think, like, if it had a little bit more shape to it, it would have, like, been a little bit... Better. I'm gonna agree with you on that, actually. It was very boxy. I, I just felt that she has the body to pull off an outfit that's like that. However, I feel like a little bit of nipping in at the waist, if there was a way to do that with that outfit, would have benefited her. And I feel like the only way, really, to do that is to add a bit of hip. So, I, I, I agree. Um, the, yeah. The shape could have been better. It's funny, like, Donna's like, she's like, I don't want to offend any of my Portland friends. <clears throat> um... <laughs> <laughs> But um, on to Lala Ree, um, she looked very matronly in her all red outfit. Yeah, and um, Donna made a comment when we were just rewatching a, a recap that I actually kind of when I first looked at the outfit, I actually did like it because it's a little bit more campy. Yeah, but it did also feel very uh, costumey, I guess. Yeah, and I know that drag artists are allowed to wear costumes, uh, of course, and especially on this show wearing costumes. But I feel like the waist could have been cinched in just a little bit, more, like not cinched in. Uh, the coat could have been more fitted. Uh huh. Uh, that would have helped the look, but honestly, that's all I needed. And then once again with the hair. Oh yeah, it was just a, a wig that was behind her shoulders. Yeah. It, I don't think there was any bit of styling to that wig. Um, no. I uh, I don't know. I did the thing I liked about her look was the fact that it was matronly, but um, it did have the sex appeal with the cleavage that was uh sheer. So you I could did, see her boobs. and I did. I did say to Donna that I really liked the sheer because it was like red on red on red on red yeah. on red. And yes, of course, we talked about an outfit, but we both disagreed even on that, so we had to talk. about Yes, it. we did. <laughs> um, yeah, you liked that outfit a bit more than I did. Um, so <laughs> let's go on to the lip sync where we fully disagree. Oh, this may uh, be a, a full out war. So loosely. So so here's my thing. Um, just because I'm going to just talk over Donna here. Um, mm-hmm. I absolutely did not agree with. Well, one, I didn't agree. With the judges' choices, but let's talk about the like the heat of lip sync. Yeah. I really thought like to me. So Simone, Simone just really, I, I went with the camp and comedy thing, and like literally making Rue laugh is of course the way to win stuff. But I also feel like that song could have just been more for me. I guess I just I don't know. Yeah. Like I just I just was like goofy, funny stuff is great. But when I'm, I always compare it to if I was watching the drag show, who would I have tipped? That's the thing. Okay. Who would I have tipped? Well, that's the thing though. Okay. Here's the thing about this lip sync. We got two very different performances from each of the queens, which I, I feel like you get sometimes out of a performance. Sometimes the queens will mock, mimic each other and do the same thing. Um, we had the case where um, uh, Tamisha was doing the Janet Jackson moves, doing the choreography for the song that fit, and, and really performing the shit out of the source material of the song. Meanwhile, I felt that Simone 
embodied the song in her own way, was able to make Rue laugh, and that's an added bonus, but really used all of the stage. Used all of the stage, added her sass, added her own individual appeal into it, and that's what sold it for me. And honestly, Simone comes out as probably my favorite queen of the entire episode. So, um, and of course I disagree. I do. <laughs> I fully disagree, actually. Because the, the thing is, I love the Janet Jackson moves. Um, because here's the thing, though. When a drag artist, like, once again, like, I, I think about drag race in the sense of what I would book in my city. Not necessarily because they have the reputation capital. So, if I saw Simone... Um, doing the number that uh, they did, I would probably not have tipped that. I'd have been like, yeah, I oh, that seems a little goofy. And I would have been down with uh, Tamisha. Like, I feel like it was, um, I would have loved to see the Janet Jackson moves. Mm-hmm. I would have screamed my head off about that because I think that that's like really cool. But then also like, I'm a girl. I I love I love a drag queen in pants. Don't I, it's it's a bad problem of mine. I love a drag queen in pants. So doing Janet Jackson moves in pants like Janet. Oh, I would have been like take every coin I own. <laughs> and I was and I was kind of happy to see Simone win. And that I feel like the youngins kind of out out uh, bested a lot of the older queens this episode. I was kind of happy to see Simone win the lip sync because I um I I saw that. Like, Tamisha was doing this thing, this older queen thing, where she was trying to, like, use her experience to intimidate Simone in the very beginning. She came off as, like, very, like, the grand dame um, when they were having their talk. So it was kind of nice to see Simone kill it in the lip sync because I was like, okay, like, she was, like, trying to, like, pull a fast one on her. and Uh, and, yeah, yeah. I get that. Like, yeah. that kind that kind of makes sense. Yeah. From that standpoint, I can I can kind of see that. I yeah. Suppose. I disagree with honesty. Like, <laughs> I, just, I was like, no, nah, that's not for. Me. Okay, so moving on to the next <laughs> two. And by the way, there's no break this episode um, no. because it is a bonus episode. Um, but if you do want to submit um, a podcast commercial to our website, go to www.agemofasecretpodcast.com. Dot com. Dot com. For free podcast advertising, if you have a podcast or a drag-related event, we will promote it on our regular shows. It's free right now. It's free right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when we're famous later and people are reading those episodes. Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry. We're not going to have so, many, so much time for so many ads, you know. <laughs> like, we're just... We're, our inbox is going to be full. It's going to be so full. <laughs> uh, so, uh, moving on. Next was Utica Queen. Yeah, Utica and Got Mick. And Got Mick. Uh, Got Mick is the trans male contestant um, who performs in drag on the yeah. show. Uh, also a fabulous makeup artist to the stars. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because um, they, I remember the biggest thing is like, obviously they did makeup for Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is, that, that's honestly really cool. Yeah. And then, so I'm not necessarily going to talk about their lips looks because I don't have a week. Because. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Very cool. Very, I mean. Both of them were great. I think but they're, they're, they're the alt, alt queens of the competition. Like mm-hmm. two very clear alt queens of the competition. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to see them paired up against each other. I think they, they I mean, obviously I think production did that strategy. Strategically. Oh yeah, production. Um, uh, honestly, for me, like I have to touch. I have to take a point on that. Yeah, the production literally. You could tell they matched up people who were kind of in the same ranks. Yeah, and like it just. And I don't know. It felt similarly. Like it did. even even with Simone and Tamisha, like it felt the same. So yeah, with these two and. I have to say, because me and Donna were going to talk about impressions a little bit, too. Mm-hmm. And I guess I'll just say it now. Um, I actually see Utica going a really long way. Like, their promo looks were just out of this Stunning. world. And, and then they make their own costumes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and, well, and, and also, it's a cohesive thought. Even yeah. with the nonsense she wore as a freaking entrance look yeah with a stupid strawberry it was very gucci to me i don't know yeah uh, aside from the strawberry it reminded me (laughs) (laughs) it reminded me of something i would see in a gucci ad on fucking tiktok you know like because those (laughs) i don't know why tiktok thinks i can afford gucci but i see have gucci ads all over my tiktok i I have gucci ads all over my tiktok no and it's it's true i actually um I was super impressed with both of them and they both, the thing about artistic characters like that are usually they're kind of more genuine um, because they have to pull from some place of some horrific drama to be able to look like that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, So they lip sync to Rumors by Lindsay Lohan. Um, how do you feel? I, you, uh, you kind of like... I thought that was the worst lip sync ever. I just... <laughs> um, honestly, it was, it was probably one of the most underwhelming f- of the episode. And I, yeah, I, I am an alt queen. As an alt queen, I was, 
a bit disappointed. Yeah, um, really like, yeah. I got Mick clearly won because Utica just kind of flailed around. It was very, um, <laughs> it was very Dusty Ray Bottoms to uh, when when she lost her lip sync against Monet Exchange. Oh, tea. Yeah, absolutely. T. It was very. It was, it was. She just kind of flailed on stage and did her her kooky thing. Well, and but, it, it, it didn't make any. Here's the thing. That song, Rumors by Lissy Lonehan, which I will put a link on our website just for those of you who want to be able to hear what the song sounds like. You'll have yeah. smartphones in your hand. You can find it really quickly. But Could have done, like, Hiding it. from Paparazzi, like, made yeah. it really campy. I love that you song. Know. Seriously, this season was, like, all about Coco's go-to mixes. Like, my my song that I put on RuPaul's Drag Race applications is When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls yeah. when I do it. And honestly, like, Rumors is a song that always, like, just gets me going so hard it's like yeah. my running mix and in my drag mixes yeah so that's just kind of funny but rumors i feel like there's because here's the thing call me maybe it's a hard song to perform to let's yeah. not lie about that there's not a lot going on in there no but rumors has a beat that's just like you can do yeah and if you and i get it you're both alternative people but and you don't need to dance the house down boots yeah but there was a lot in the song yeah that you could just like camp up a little bit or do kind of crazy things with even mix um split was a little underwhelming because um the there's like the center of their body didn't touch the floor fully when they split and uh, (laughs) that always makes me uncomfortable when entertainers do that because i'm like oh they don't really have like the stretching down to do a full split yeah like it's an attempted split but um i still still got mick did outperform utica and uh rightfully deserved to to win that lip sync absolutely um up next we have olivia lux and rosé Olivia Lux and Rose. So I have to admit, listeners, listeners, this was the one where I was actually in the in the bathroom while this happened. Oh yeah. So I don't actually have too much of like any of the vocal mm-hmm. stuff about like what happened between them. But I have to say that Rose's outfit, once again the outfits, uh, was one of my favorites in the sense of simplicity. Mm-hmm. Like opposed to Joey J's outfit, like I actually like Rose's a lot more. I just feel like with the hair, oh, because especially because styled hair. And matching hair. hair. It was fully mon- monochromatic. Joey J just wore red and black with a blonde wig. Yes. So I, I do like a fully monochromatic look. One that is one color from head to toe. Yes. Yeah. And I, I honestly, and I thought it was, I know some, like my roommate said it was like really simple. And it I was, was quintessential like, drag queen. I, I just, I liked it. Yeah. I did. I did like it. It was. It reminded me of Gem and the Holograms. And, um, you. <laughs> How dare you. And I, I did for the most part <laughs> like Olivia Lux's look. However, um, I want to talk a little bit more about the interesting pairing of this is Rose's kind of a veteran in the drag scene in New York, while Olivia Lux is a very much so a newcomer that is new on the scene for like a yes. year and a half in New York. So they got paired against each other, and what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, what did happen? I didn't. Get to see it. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> well, well, Miss Miss Newcomer bested uh, the veteran and and beat her in the lip sync, which I think was fully deserved. Uh, Rose was doing a lot of stunts. She was doing she was doing a lot, and I think sometimes you can overperform a song. Meanwhile, Olivia really performed the song and felt it. It was X's and O's by L King, which I love that song. It's one of my favorite. Oh, I didn't even know what the song was. Yeah. Cause I, yeah, I got to, I had to miss it. Yeah. It's uh, one of my favorite songs to sing at karaoke. And uh, yeah, no, that was, uh, Oh, but Olivia's hair was great. I loved it. Honestly, it was weird, but it I was loved weird, it. But yeah. I, did. I, I got down with it. It was really cool. And when she performed, she reminded me of like a 19, um, sixties go, go girl kind of doing like those like little go, go moves while she performed. Oh, didn't she have a reveal? She did. Yeah. So she f- came in a full gown and then there was a skirt that came off of it and turned into a bodysuit. So Good she for was her. She was ready. She, I guess that's the one reason why uh, Bussy Queen said in their their recap why they were like, oh, I think they knew that they were going to lip sync because these were very performance based costumes. I don't think they fully knew. I thought maybe they I think maybe they knew they were going to do something, but I don't think they knew that they were going to have to lip sync for their Well, lives. actually, here's the thing, though, that that could have been true in the sense that your walk-in is not normally mm-hmm. what you're spending the like whole day in, I guess. So like to like to to have to lip sync on the first day. Yeah. To, maybe if they were told they had to lip sync on the first day, um, and it would be with their walk-in, maybe that would have been a thing. Yeah. And I guess it's good that they didn't because it made it better for TV. I think they knew that they were going to have to do something sort of active because typically they have something that that does i mean like they've had photo shoots in the past mm-hmm. and granted that hasn't happened for a lot of seasons but um i think they were probably told to wear something they can move in and that makes 
probably yeah. a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think th- I definitely don't think they knew they were going to lip sync t- again for their lives. But oh, I yeah. think they knew they Absolutely. had. I think they had some kind of idea that they were going to do- have to do something active. But um, yeah, great job for Olivia Lux and Rose did a great job too. Uh, but I just felt like Olivia Lux really embodied the song with her air guitaring and go go girl moves. And the last one was a three way lip sync, right? With Tina Burner. Tina Burner. We had Kamora Hall. Kamora Hall. And Elliot with two T's. Elliot with two T's. Yes. So um, I have to say this. One of my favorite outfits actually um, was probably Elliot with two T's. Like I just, I freaking adore like a blazer with a bra and like, once again, pants. I'm all about pants for drag queens. It's like so great and i loved it and even though i think that utica is going to go super super far i really 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 liked what ellie with two t's brought to the runway. i liked the look that she had um the hair when i saw it up close could have been a bit better but yeah. um Shaking i can go season yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> i know we're just gonna keep talking about that like there's only a couple of queens we were impressed by the hair with so. i know and, and then it's totally okay because like obviously i'm not on tv but i'm gonna wear shaking goes until i am so even though you said that you kind of were iffy about Kamora's hair I love so I love the 1960s and that big old Valley of the Dolls hair that she was wearing with the Bob Mackie gown I was like I love that so I liked her big drag hair um I liked her hair a lot uh, Tina Burner also had a styled wig so um Elliot was the only one in this group without a styled wig yes yeah yes Elliot was the only one without a styled wig yeah so um going immediately into the lip sync listeners yeah uh so this is what's interesting to me like I, so they did Lady Marmalade was the song, which is obviously a four-part song. Good song to choose when you have lots of people on stage. Yeah. And of course, they didn't pick parts. They all just lip synced the whole song together. Yeah. And I have to say that I was most impressed with Elliot with two T's, actually, in my opinion. Yeah. I thought that they really, really served the party. And what really sucked for Kamora Hall is that uh, she was not in an outfit that I think was conducive to this, just like Denali. Honestly, if it came up to... If we want to talk about outfits for a surprise lip sync, I think those two are at the biggest disadvantage. They were. the the. Yes, I mean, you. Yes, I agree. A Bob Mackie gown, you, it's so limited what you can do. And I mean, and she ended ended the song with her doing like a, a dip in the Bob Mackie gown, right. at the, at which I thought it, she did it well. So don't give me like it wasn't bad, um, but it did limit what she could do throughout the beginning of the performance because she like didn't know. I I okay. I want to voice, though, that I think Kamora should have won the lip sync because I thought even though she was limited with her dress, I think it really embodied the spirit of Lady Marmalade, the song. Well, and that's well, here's the thing, though, like I keep thinking about what I would have done in her shoes. Yeah. And I actually want to say it, it was a play on words. I'm sorry. Just <laughs> like maybe just like me, yeah. she can't like turn the party and the heels she would wore, she had to wear with that gown because yeah. the shoes match perfectly right. Yeah. And then she had hair that I could absolutely tell wasn't as glued as it might have needed to be for that song. Yeah. And so my thing is I would have I would have stomped that runway hard and I don't know if she was wearing a panty or not, but like I would have stomped that runway hard to pretend like I was the, the owner of the hoe house, you know, yeah. for Lady Marmalade like to like put myself into that picture and even like i wouldn't have tried to make rue laugh i would have just tried to make rue look like i was like literally the head hoe mm-hmm. i would have like stomped down the runway i would have like like you were the dra- like the mother dress, of like. the house of lady marmalade yes yeah. and that's mm-hmm. that's kind of how i would have played it if i was in her shoes especially with that song yeah and um because i i i I could kind of see how you thought that she, with what she was wearing, just, she, she should have won. She served me sexy in that look, and and I thought she embodied the song very really well. But this is the first one where we both disagree with RuPaul, but we also disagree with each other. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> no, because like yeah, because Ellie with two teeth just like killed the party. For and me I just for thought, what they honestly, Tina Burner, like like oh, you're just doing sexual gestures the entire song, and like I know, I just making Ru like because it really gets more old and senile. Um, so yeah, making an older person laugh is great, but like I really want to see, <laughs> I really want to see the way you said that. <laughs> I just want to see better drag. Making the like, shriveled, shriveled up. Uh, <laughs> Old being in the nursing home laugh. I just want to, yeah, I do want to see a little bit better of everything a little yeah. bit, actually. So, yeah. I don't know. Let's, 
that's kind of where I'm at with it, I suppose. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we have a couple more minutes in this episode, but we're going to just tie it up with what ended up happening at the very end. So the queens are split up into the winners of the lip syncs and the uh, queens that were pork chopped. Dun, Not, dun, dun. They were told to sashay away, but they were they were told they get the pork chop. So um, now they're in two separate um, two separate teams. What do you think is going to happen? Um, actually, so yeah, we're supposed to be talking about impressions Yeah, and I don't know. I am not one of a person who tries to find a link or get spoilers. I like to watch my TV when I watch my TV. So I, yeah, I actually don't know how they're going to bring them back. Cause the way Rue made it sound is that only some of them will get to come back, I guess. Yeah. Like they had to, um, they had to choose someone to get the pork chop or to oh, get the Oh yeah. Chop. They had to choose someone to get chopped. Yeah. And that's messed up because they don't know. Each <laughs> I other. know they all look at each other and like, we don't know each other yet. Yeah. Like that's kind of messed. That's bunk. And but... what did, uh, what did Tamisha say? She's like, well, I'm the only black girl here. So don't vote for me. <laughs> yeah. Don't vote for me. Cause that's fucked. Yeah. Um, so I, so I would like Rose to come back. Um, yeah, I would like. I would really like to see Rose come back. I want Tamisha come back. Um, I feel like D- Denali has so much more to show. Um, wait, who lost in Utica and got Mick? Was it Utica, Utica? did? Yeah, so I want Utica to come back. Obviously, yeah. um, <laughs> it's funny. I, I want all of them to come back. They just they all did such a great job. Yeah. Um, wait, who do you not want to? Who do you? I don't. I don't know because then it's gonna no. sound like no. Yeah. It's gonna sound like I hate Joey J, but okay, I. But I think Joey J is the person who. Okay, so this is where I will agree with Donna from the. So we're we'll circle back to the first part of the episode, listeners. If you tuned in halfway, I don't hate you, Joey J. I'm sorry. I think that Joey J should be the person. I do. I think that because of the comment, how they didn't serve it super hard and whatever, and a little bit of a shake and go semi styled wig. Um, I think that they should be the person that probably goes home because they didn't like bring their super super a game walking in like because like i we've said on the show before most of the people who get not most some yeah other people who get on drag race take out a like a super large personal loan to get all of these outfits like commission and whatever because drag race isn't real drag in a bar it's yeah. not and so but being on the show and wanting to compete to the end like it takes a little bit more than a bodysuit that even i could sew i guess the reason why i'm so hard on it is because it's me projecting. I, um, I've i never auditioned for Drag Race. Never have. And it's because I see a lot of my own drag in, in some of what Joey J brings. And I would not bring that on the show. I would I would not bring a lot of what I currently have on the show if, if I were to present a package of myself. Um, so I guess it's, it's my own personal thing, honestly. But um, I hope I see some more from Joey J in the future. Um, if they don't yeah. make it past this episode or the next episode, I would, I, I just want to see more. Um, so yeah, I, I have room to feel impressed by this queen. <laughs> yes. and let me actually add in here for the thing that Donna's never had to do. When I first arrived at Camp Wanakiki, um, they, everybody's costumes were in the middle of the main, like cabin. Yeah. Like everyone's costumes are there. So I drove to Camp on a Kiki so I could put all my costumes in boxes and I put all my costumes in separate boxes. That way you just open the box, take out everything you need. Yeah. Um, to make it easier. Cause I didn't know how much time we would have. So when I first walked in, I saw all of these extravagant costumes mm-hmm. that intimidated the F out of me. And I was just like, well, and I mean, it's like what Vanji said or somebody said about Vanji. She brought yeah. what she brought. Yeah. You know, and I brought what I brought. There's, and especially because I'm out in the forest, like, there's no other way I can change it. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I know that it's the same for the people who made it on the show. They probably all have, like, maybe three or four backup outfits or whatever. And, but it's kind of like what happened with Denali. Like, they were told to wear something stunning, you know, to go into the workroom. And they did. And I was so impressed by it. And I was yeah. like, Lord, I will never be caught in anything that they wore. And that's, no. I, the thing is, Drag Race is so far removed from me that I would really love to see um, stuff that I would be like, Dang. That's true. I mean, it is kind of nice seeing someone that I kind of identify with a similar aesthetic, like on on the, my television, you yeah. know, like, I think that, that that is the nice thing about seeing yourself in some of these entertainers that are on here it's a mm-hmm. platform for these amateur artists to really i mean some of them are amateur some of them are very seasoned um mm-hmm. to to get on there and, and and show their art you know and i think that's amazing um but yeah 
uh, I don't hate you, Joey J. Um, <laughs> I want to. I just want to see more. <laughs> and that's yes, all. Definitely. So I'm super <laughs> excited. Um, actually, we can use this as a promotion. So obviously, this upcoming Friday at local lounge in Portland, Oregon. If you want to be outside with a beautiful fire pit and some heaters and lamps and things like that, come support me and Autumn. Having uh, Autumn Rain's Heart having an outdoor viewing party for Drag Race. We are the only viewing party, from what I understand, that's happening in the city. There are a couple of online ones, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, for in city, if you want to come out and support Drag Race, like there you go. Yeah, it happens at of course eight o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So yeah, 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 come out and support if you are in the area, please. And uh, thank you all for tuning into this bonus episode. Oh, wait, Donna, we didn't tell the fans what did what were we wearing for this bonus episode? Um, I was actually wearing a uh, red and black uh, lycra bodysuit with uh, chicken feather arms. Oh, that's so great! Um, yeah, what <laughs> I was wearing was a red pantsuit with like spiky arms oh, as yeah. well, but it was kind of like a slick back hair, black. Oh, specifically black, oh, yeah, actually. yeah. yeah. Oh, and, um, and, but the not, sheer. But not really sheer. Mine was uh-huh. open. Yours was open. Mine oh, just full open. out titties. Yeah, just titties. Just, okay. Oh, and, and, um, <laughs> you showed Tamisha like, Amon. I am not matronly. <laughs> and I was just like, and it's a little fitted. Um, <laughs> and then no shoes because hashtag they hurt. Um, yeah. Cool. Maybe we'll just do it at the end of the episode for these recaps. Um, (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We're going to keep doing these bonus episodes as the season goes on. I don't know if we'll do it for UK. We'll we'll play it by ear as it happens. It may be too much. But um, thank you for tuning in. And we will be back with some more recaps of season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of a Gem of a Secret podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a J E M of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>